Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to chat about some concepts that are near and dear to the human experience and discussion of them today is both informed by my experience as a human being but also by Immanuel Kant and his critique of judgment. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video. The concept of the sublime is one of my all-time favorite topics in philosophy. So without further ado, the pleasant. We are all intimately familiar with the pleasant. We seek or are tempted to seek the pleasant every day and arguably every moment of our waking lives. The pleasant is bound with our five senses, sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. While our senses evolved primarily for the benefit of our survival, such as to see or hear predators and to distinguish between nutritious and poisonous berries in the wild, somewhere along our evolutionary history, our senses also became channels for gratification. Gratification occurs when there is some stimuli out in the world and you make contact with it through one of your sense organs and this interaction impresses upon you certain feelings of agreeableness, delight, or enjoyment, and in extreme cases, ecstasy. Gratification usually quenches some um, craving or desire and its effects are usually immediate without much thought or work on your part. The pleasant is subjective, meaning different people may experience gratification from different things or different people might experience varying degrees of gratification from the same thing. For example, I might love the taste of an extra dirty martini with olives while another might prefer to sip on some sweet rosé wine. While we could certainly get competitive about our drinks of choice, it's quite silly to tell somebody that they should experience more or less gratification from something. What is pleasant for me is pleasant for me, and what is pleasant for you is pleasant for you. And the pleasant is one of those categories where philosophers don't mind uttering one of our least favorite phrases to each their own. The good. The good, on the other hand, doesn't just bring us surface level gratification. It's bound with something deeper, with our reason, our intentions, and ideal outcomes. The good is either good in itself or good for something else, like a tool. It could be an object or an activity or even a frame of mind. Either way, it will be useful in carrying out some moral or practical interest. For example, a calculator doesn't bring me sensual pleasure, but it brings me a practical pleasure because it allows me to complete arithmetic quickly and accurately. And furthermore, picking up trash around my neighborhood is a moral good because it makes me feel like I am taking a small action to take care of my community and environment. While our relationship with the pleasant is subjective, the good has a little bit more objectivity to it. What is good should be good for all, ideally assuming that our faculties are reasonable and our moral compass is aligned. The beautiful. While the pleasant is pleasurable because it gratifies and the good is pleasurable because it's useful, the beautiful is just beautiful. The beautiful serves no purpose in the sense that it gratifies something or helps us carry something else out. Beauty is pleasurable by virtue of being beautiful and just existing. Things that are beautiful are like these magical objects or scenes with this glow or aura about them. They make life generally better and inspire us to continue living and seeking more beautiful things and experiences. And Plato wrote at length about the beautiful and he essentially said that the beautiful is a tribute to perfection or the more ideal forms that are found in the heavens and the world beyond. The beautiful doesn't always immediately impress itself upon us. We receive it through our intellect and process it through reflection. 
And as such, it takes some training of the mind to properly appreciate the beautiful. And thus, we deem those who disagree with our judgments of the beautiful as possessing some sort of mental defect. <laughs> They're just missing something. They're wrong. And judgments of the beautiful are judgments that we are willing to argue over. In fact, we require our judgments of the beautiful to be universal. What is beautiful for me is not just beautiful for me, but it should be beautiful for you too. The beautiful is usually found in the arts, the sciences, and in nature. And it has been argued by Kant, for example, that what beautiful is, is that it is the correct form or arrangement of parts. So whether it's visual or auditory, the parts of the beautiful thing come together in such a way that is proportional or harmonious. It is a beautiful configuration. For example, in both the arts and the sciences, objects or scenes that possess the golden ratio are deemed to be objectively beautiful, like a flower or fruit with perfect spirals. But perhaps, beyond just mere proportions, something could be beautiful because it has history or because of what it represents the sublime one of my favorite if not my favorite topic in philosophy is the sublime while the pleasant the good and the beautiful all seem to have a positive valence to them the sublime has a both a positive and a negative valence simultaneously. It inspires awe and even some terror. That which is sublime is boundless. It is so great in magnitude or might that we cannot help but measure ourselves against it. In juxtaposition with the sublime, we remember our humanity, our mortality, and even how extraordinary our intellect is for having the capacity to understand or experience the force of the sublime. There are two types of sublimes to consider. The first is the mathematical and the second is the dynamic. The mathematical sublime is experienced in the face of great magnitude. For example, when we ponder the concept of infinity or the magnitude of the universe or God or maybe even love, we cannot help but feel awe, a positive inspiring experience but also terror at how little and insignificant we, both in body and mind, are in the face of it. I once experienced the mathematical sublime. I was backpacking in the eastern Sierra Nevadas in California. One night, we slept outside in our sleeping bags beside a lake that was nestled in the valley between some mountains. I woke up in the middle of the night and I wasn't wearing my glasses and I can't see anything without my glasses. When I put them on and I looked at the sky, I saw the Milky Way. All the colors, all the stars, and its form. It was quite literally out of this world. I think about that night often, the night I observed the Milky Way, the eye of our cosmos and basked in the sublime. I've been chasing that experience again, but it's extremely difficult because of all the light pollution and I don't find myself in the middle of nowhere very often, but I would love to experience it again. On the other hand, the dynamic sublime is commonly experienced when witnessing the force of mother nature, but from a safe distance. I experienced a dynamic sublime while Sailing through the fjords of western Norway, I was at the front of the ship and I was alone in all senses of the word and I was surrounded by towering fjords. I had never seen mountains that high, each whom had a majestic waterfall washing over it into the dark blue sea and the wind was blowing in my face so powerfully that I could not hear anything but the wind and I could only see the sea and the fjords and I just sobbed and more recently my partner and I went to Mexico and we got caught in the eye of a hurricane and we spent the day at a tropical beach drinking beers and eating ceviche as we watched the hurricane approach the coast. 
for some reason, we even got massages on the beach for the hell of it because who can say they got a massage on the beach as a hurricane approached? By the time we were done, we and everything we owned was covered in sand and we got back to our hotel in time, secured the doors and watched through our floor to ceiling windows as the 100 mile per hour wind destroyed the palm trees our pool and shattered all the glass we had foolishly left out the night before. We watched all of this from the safety of our covers. It was beautiful and terrifying. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the pleasant, the good, the beautiful, and the sublime. Have you experienced the sublime? If so, I would love to know. Please leave your experience in the comments and, as always, Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notifications bell. Your support means the world. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you next time.